The automotive industry is a backbone industry of the German economy and also one of the largest employers in the world. I am your host Paras Mehta and today on India to Germany, we speak with Anirudh Jaipuria about his experience as a mechanical engineer in the German automotive industry. Anirudh is a specialist in multi-body simulation and currently leads projects in the area of drivetrain design and development for high-performance cars at BMW M, the sports car subsidiary of BMW. He has several years of experience working in the automotive sector in Germany as well as in India. Anirudh shares his experience and insights and gives very valuable suggestions for people aspiring to work in the German automotive sector. Welcome Anirudh, thank you for speaking with us. Hi Paras, thanks a lot for the opportunity. I'm really excited to talk with you today. So Anirudh, I'm really curious to know about what you're doing in your current role. Although I don't have a mechanical engineering background myself. Uh, so I was just wondering if you could describe your work in a lay person's terms to me. Okay. Yeah, like uh, from studies, uh, I studied mechanical engineering. Uh, I have a master's in that in the field of engine technology, which also partially covers automotive engineering. And right now I'm working as a simulation engineer at BMW M. It's the sports car subsidiary of BMW. So my work is basically to carry out certain simulations for different uh, car parts so we are in the powertrain development so everything that brings the car in motion the engine the drive shaft the differential we do the designing of such parts for the cars and we kind of using softwares uh, try to build up a simulation model so that we can design these parts and that's currently my role at bmw okay yeah. And you yourself uh, focus specifically on powertrain. Right. Like my main focus is powertrain. Uh, traditionally, it used to mean only engines. Nowadays, of course, uh, with the electromobility and everything, we are start slowly also getting into the electric powertrains. So, yeah, different things like stress analysis or vibration analysis, acoustic analysis, such things. Yeah. Okay. So could you give us perhaps some examples of the kind of projects that you work on? Uh, for example, like we usually in the automotive industry, every four to five years, there is a new generation of a car model. So let's say, for example, the BMW lineup has different series like one series, two series, etc. So we develop on the powertrains of different vehicles. And every two to three years, we bring kind of a small update. And every four to five years, we have a bigger update. So, for example, this year, about one month back, uh, we showed the new M3 and M4 models to the world. And I worked on the powertrain of these two cars. So the engine, some of the components were designed by me. Of course, not alone. It's a teamwork. But uh, for certain components, I had the responsibility. And yeah, that's one of the product one uh, which people can buy today. Great. So you mentioned this is a teamwork. So what does the team look like? Uh, I, I can imagine that maybe people of different disciplines work together in each team. Right. Like uh, we are as such, I'm in the development department, the research and development department. So there, classically, there are like three departments. One is the design, uh, one is simulation, and one is testing. So like it's a teamwork of all three departments, but ultimately to get the product delivered to the customer, there are of course other departments. For example, production, the factory where the cars, car or the engine is getting built. We are in constant touch with these people. Then there are people in the quality department uh, which assist us for development with suppliers. Then there are also people from purchase which uh, negotiate the price with all our suppliers or also in-house components. So like it's a huge team of course and each one has their own role. So within development, I have my role and 
a part of my role is also coordination of certain activities with other departments like i mentioned with purchase or the factory colleagues or the quality people and also we work with a lot of suppliers so i kind of coordinate with certain suppliers for some of the powertrain components great yeah it does sound very cross disciplinary in nature uh, yeah i think over the years like if you take a car i would say about 90% of the car, car components are kind of externally sourced so bmw does not uh, produce all the car components in house we design a lot ourselves and get it manufactured by others but uh, there are also certain components where we directly buy it from the supplier and integrate it within the car so it's a lot of uh, like interdisciplinary work with different people and different companies also okay and you yourself are leading such projects at the moment yeah like uh, i would say not the whole project but uh, certain components are under my responsibility so i think each company has different structures how they work at our place the structure is that within the development group uh, for example engine has let's say 100 components so different engineers have responsibilities for different components of the engine and similarly i have certain responsibilities for certain components so i do the project coordination work for these things okay so i'm curious uh, what kind of skills does one need in order to lead such projects like you do i think uh, firstly you need some technical background uh, like general mechanical engineering background is required for the kind of work which we do besides that of course uh, certain specific knowledge about engines and powertrains also automobiles uh, certain softwares come in handy depending on the kind of work like you might be aware of cad softwares cad softwares which are used for the design people then depending on the kind of simulation there are various softwares for structural analysis or flow analysis or aerodynamics there is a huge variety so such things are required on the technical part then on the management side you kind of need some experience in project management for example planning the work scheduling everything then giving reports uh, in the different project reviews then like this milestone planning such things that basically you are supposed to highlight if some problems are coming then you are supposed to highlight it in all the reviews and then depending on the kind of problem you get support from other people or you need more resources maybe or maybe you need some external help that you don't have enough people internally and some work is given externally so one needs to be able to judge all this so these are the skills required on the management side okay so you your role is sort of a mix between this technical research and development but also this coordination exactly uh, okay yeah all right so in the past you have worked for several years uh, in the automotive industry in germany including big names like uh, bmw and volkswagen how would you describe your experience of working in the automotive sector in germany i think uh, in the automotive field germany is one of the best places to be like uh, the german cars are i think quite popular for their quality and performance worldwide and like both volkswagen or bmw but also other companies like porsche audi mercedes they are all really very good and for me in general it has been a really enriching experience like they have a lot of resources here also a lot of challenging problems and uh, you really get to work on very exciting products so i think like if somebody is interested in such a field then germany is certainly a good place to be yeah okay that's very good to hear and other than germany you've also worked in the automotive sector in india how would you describe that experience and perhaps how would you compare that experience with your experience in germany 
think in India, I was also working uh, within the research and development department at Ashok Leyland. It was a commercial vehicle manufacturer. I think uh, like one difference is that uh, the amount of resources which we had in, in India, they were compared to the companies here really less. Like just to give a feeling, our department budget there it was probably 10 times smaller than the department budget here or maybe even smaller so i think in india to be in the research and development field especially in mechanical engineering there are resources but not as much compared to say germany or if you work for a big oem in germany they really have a lot of resources and there is also a lot of experience here since they have been developing car from say ground up like from base so there's also a lot of experience i think there india is i don't know how the situation is in the past 10 years but at least as i was there 10 years back that experience was still getting built and that time we needed a lot of kind of external support from other companies as well and i think that is also a big difference Besides that, there are some cultural things like how we approach a problem, how we plan a product. These are also kind of different in India compared to Germany, I feel. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of specific cultural differences do you come to your mind? Um, I think, uh, like, to be honest, the teamwork in Germany is a little bit better, I feel. Uh, in India, we can improve a little bit upon the teamwork. Besides that, on the product point of view, I think the Indian market is extremely price sensitive. I mean, ultimately, every market is price sensitive, but like the cost pressures which we had in India, I think compared to that uh, here in Germany, I feel it is much lesser. So in India, we also need to be very, very cost sensitive. Also, while designing the product, we need to take a lot into account about misuse scenarios in India. And we do that in Germany as well, but not to that extent. So I think such differences are there. Okay, yeah, that's very interesting, I have to say. Always interesting to know these differences between uh, different work scenarios. And uh, how is it that you got started in this area of automotives in the first place uh, like i said after my bachelor's in india i started working with ashok leyland so like i was interested in the development field so i got the opportunity as well and about germany as i was at ashok leyland i was in a project with a supplier from germany for about three years so that was kind of the first contact with uh, german colleagues and that was also one of the big reasons why I decided for Germany later on. There were also other reasons like uh, I was also interested in US initially, but uh, there visa was also a big issue. And like in Germany, visa is uh, much easier to get for students. Also, the, the tuition fees in Germany, in most cases, it's like the education here is free. In certain cases where the fees is there, it's also far lesser compared to the US. So like these were the reasons why I ended up deciding for Germany ultimately. And I had some contacts here due to my work in India. So these people also helped me a lot initially. All right. So you were uh, through your contact with Germany, you perhaps also got to know a little bit about uh, the German automotive sector and then exactly. you actively decided to move there. Yeah, like I think in India, everybody knows that G German cars are like quite popular there, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, everything. So that was always also kind of a big motivation for me that I wanted to work in one of these companies because I like the product. So yeah, and due to these contacts, I, I got a good start also here initially. So that was it. It was a mix of all these factors then. All right. And uh, talking about the German automotive industry, I mean, you already mentioned that yeah, it's uh, 
it's very huge and it's a very po- important part of the German economy also. Uh, what would you say are some of the important current trends in this area? I think uh, like right now, electromobility is probably going to be a huge thing in the coming five to six years. Uh, I think most of the companies are investing hugely in this field. So people who are looking to get into at least the development uh, departments, they should think about getting some kind of skill in this field. Like, for example, battery technology or electric motor technology, the whole cooling concepts for electro cars, electric cars. So this is one of the huge trends. Then besides that, uh, autonomous driving could also be a a huge trend. Like it has slowed down a bit in the past six months, but it seems to be that in the coming future, that can also be a huge trend. Like a lot of companies are trying to develop autonomous cars. So that is an exciting field. Then there is also a lot of software coming into cars now. So people who are into kind of software development, if they are interested in cars, then for them, there is going to be a huge scope in the coming years. There is a lot of stuff going on in infotainment for cars. Then you must have heard of over the air updates, which a lot of companies are making now. And like software in cars is going to be a huge theme in the coming years. And there are also things like augmented reality where certain head-up displays are being des- developed. So I think the automotive industry is moving slowly from being a traditional mechanical engineering industry to kind of a mix of software, electronics, and mechanical. So this seems to be a change happening at least in the coming three to four years, five years then depending on the market things can change again but i think the next five years seems to be like uh, seem to be like this true i think you summarized it very well that it's uh, moving from a traditionally mechanical engineering field into a kind of a cross disciplinary field with people from software engineering electronics mechanical yeah. uh, other fields as well also for example uh, artificial intelligence is getting a lot of uh, steam now like within bmw also there's a lot of work going on and in general also i think artificial intelligence and machine learning are also some of the things which are going to be hugely important Uh, just to give an example like what companies are doing now is they are able to for example collect the driver data from the customers so like if you buy a car today then because of over there connections and all they are able to in principle get your driving profiles and such things and based on driver behavior and such things they can then develop a product depending on certain needs so where this is where like data science comes into place and in future things like artificial intelligence and machine learning will help so these are also really very very exciting fields to be in True. I mean, these companies have a lot of data, so now exactly. they are kind of also making use of it. Yeah. Like with electromobility, a lot is going to change. Like also, there's going to be a lot of works together with the grid sub, like the energy grid suppliers, because depending on how your car is charging, it will influence the energy grid. So there is a lot of potential for like teaming up for car companies with such grid suppliers and there's a lot of uh, things there are a lot of things moving in this field and i think it's really exciting to be in such a field right now that's very nice to hear so what would you suggest are some of the career options for people who are looking to work in this field I think in automotive, like in general, you can be either in the development side, for example, where I am. One can also be on the production side, like in the factory. Uh, There, I personally have less experience, but a lot of things are happening with, uh, there is this thing called Industry 4.0, where a lot of new manufacturing concepts are getting uh, designed and 
how to monitor things and a lot of things are happening on the production side you can also get into supply chain management purchase departments lean manufacturing such stuff you can get into strategy for companies like bmw where depending on the market data they decide the product strategy so i think uh, there is a huge amount of options there are lots of options like you can get into automotive in field using different paths depending on what you are interested in yeah okay yeah sounds very interesting then perhaps do you think there are also some typical skills that one needs to get into this area which come to your mind yeah, like i said uh, i i feel that software uh, part is going to get a lot of uh, attention in the coming future so in my opinion like there's also a lot of shortage of uh, good software engineers in germany in general so that is one field which is good of course the traditional mechanical engineering field is always going to be there so there will be jobs for mechanical engineers as well also a lot of jobs will probably get created for electrical engineers um, or like even electronics engineers with this electromobility thing coming in yeah then if somebody is interested in management then uh, strategy and all or supply chain management their management people are required yeah like such things okay so i also know that you uh, voluntarily help out people uh, who are looking to get into the automotive sector or or in general who are looking for jobs in germany by reviewing their cv and also their cover letter and documents uh, so perhaps based on your experience you know uh, if where should people look for jobs and internships in the automotive sector in germany if you have any suggestions yeah i think uh, like how it usually works here is uh, there is this concept of internship and then a thesis uh, most of the universities require both of these things so most of the companies at least the bigger ones have a career page so for example bmw has a career page where one can make a profile uh, with your email address and then they publish all their openings uh, on this career page and one needs to upload their resume usually accompanied by a cover letter and certain information about their grade and everything and you need to apply to the position on the internet then via this career page that is one good way of uh, applying uh, many companies also offer something called a initiative uh, application in german it's called initiative bewerbung so if you don't find a particular position which is of interest to you then you can just write a generic cover letter saying what you are looking for and uh, if they find some suitable position for you then they get back to you uh, for smaller companies it's possible that they don't have a explicit career page uh, then there you have to kind of look through other portals like google or linkedin or in germany there's some uh, a similar product like linkedin called zing so people should make accounts on these platforms and also look for positions there also each year like three to four times a year there are this job fairs usually in university towns uh, everybody gets to know about it people should also visit this job fairs in my opinion a lot of small companies uh, directly take candidates for internship at such job fairs also because for smaller companies it's usually more difficult to get good talent so it's definitely worth a visit and uh, there you also get to talk with some of the engineers they explain you a little bit about their work and what kind of opportunities are there such things i would suggest and one of the most important things is that a uh, lot of people kind of get quite quickly demotivated if they get one or two rejects from a particular company but uh, one needs to understand that there is a lot of competition 
like BMW typically for one position they get probably three four hundred applications now out of three four hundred people if you get rejected once then you should not stop applying you know <laughs> yeah it's 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 not such a big deal like it can happen and this is one thing probably what a lot of people do that if they get three four rejects from a company then they stop looking at it altogether and i think uh, that should also be avoided one needs to have some patience and uh, yeah like if anybody is interested i can help reviewing their cv and cover letter uh, yeah this is one initiative and offer which i can extend from my side they can contact me via linkedin and i will try to help yeah great this is actually very very useful advice and it's also i'm very impressed that you you know when i saw on your linkedin profile that you were offering this for free to um, to everyone it's uh, i think it's very very nice of you and uh, yeah like, help many people yeah i try to like uh, i would like people not to go through the struggles which i think people like me had to go through initially and uh, if somebody can benefit from that it's always good so yeah i i enjoy it also because it's interesting to see how different people present their resumes i also get to learn from it and you get to know more people this way so yeah in all i i find it very interesting yeah it's interesting you say that because i feel like i'm also in exactly the same situation um this podcast is also like speaking to people like yourself is also a learning experience for me and it's uh, yeah also i fe- get the feeling that i hopefully i'm able to help people who are in a similar situation like i am mm-hmm. uh, like i was uh, 10 years ago when i moved here uh, no i think it's a great initiative and uh, i hope it continues in future as well one more thing which i would like to suggest to people is uh, like uh, a lot of people underestimate how important learning the german language here is uh, i think for most indian students uh, at least for the indian students one of the biggest challenges is to learn the language and a lot of people think that if they get the best grades then the rest will work out i think at least in the automotive sector whether you like it or not uh, language is extremely important like one of the reasons for that is especially if you are in the factory floor then the people working there they are not always highly qualified and a lot of colleagues there are not that good with english or not that comfortable with english and that is one of the biggest reasons uh, while it's very important to learn german here and besides that some amount of cultural integration is always good like uh, that everyone needs to decide for themselves but i think in germany teamwork is extremely important and i find it also very positive and for that some kind of cultural integration is also required that you go to some kind of team events together or you go to some christmas party together or some like in munich there is the october fest if your team is going there maybe you should join them like such small things <laughs> and yeah. a lot of people underestimate the importance of such things but at the end of the day all these things play a role like the technical part of the job is one part but building relationships uh, is equally important and i think it's important in each country germany is also the same Yeah. true that's a really very useful advice really very useful um uh, also i'm sure many of the listeners are interested in jobs uh, specifically perhaps at uh, bmw m uh, or in the german automotive sector in general perhaps you have some suggestions for them yeah of course like all companies are always looking for talent like usually there are a huge number of openings for internships and thesis positions um like i said uh, right now at least at our group at least in my department i am not aware but in general uh, whenever there is an opening available it will be published on the website so people should uh, regularly visit the careers page 
you one can also kind of uh, put an reminder on the careers page so whenever a new position comes then you get a email automatically so i can only suggest that and the same applies to other companies as well and besides that like i said networking helps a lot at least in internship positions or student job positions so try to network with people add them on linkedin try to converse visit job fairs meet people and uh, for internships uh, if you know people things become easier uh, for jobs it's much more difficult there you need lot of other things but for internships uh, people are a little bit more lenient so if you know some people then things can work out a little bit faster yeah that's really really very very valuable advice i have to say yeah thank you very much anirudh for sharing all your valuable advice and your experience with us um, i'm very happy to have the opportunity and like i said if anybody needs some kind of support with their documents or also like general things they can approach me on linkedin it takes some time for me to reply but uh, i will rip get back to you and i will try to help whatever i can yeah that's a wonderful initiative i will also add a link to your linkedin profile in the blog post uh, and on the in the description of the podcast episode yeah and i hope this podcast continues and i look forward to hearing other things on the podcast as well yeah great initiative for us yeah, thank you very much that's all folks remember to subscribe to our podcast and check out our blog on indiatogermany.com see you in the next episode Thank you.